going to offer a perspective at the other end of the market. Most of our work is um, of a smaller scale, one or two units. Um, but there's been some incredibly valuable learnings from that. Um, what works, um, what some of the opportunities are, and um, just a small offering, I think, just a, a taste as such, because um, I've only got 20 minutes and I could bore the socks off everyone getting into the technicalities. So I don't know if anyone's actually poured through the Building Act legislation. I tend to pull this one up here whenever I can. It's the purposes from the Building Act. Um, I think they're quite noble. Uh, if I had a preference, it would be for some stronger language, uh, perhaps, um, that contribute appropriately, sort of leaves all sorts of weasel room, um, as does uh, promote sustainable development. You know, I think there's a, a bit of scope there just to ignore them, but uh, it's a good solid basis for, for what the construction industry should be doing. And... Um, this is actually what our clients talk to us about. They they come to us and they say, hey, I want something that uh, is healthy and warm and um, doesn't make us sick at uh, you know, enabling our well-being, physical independence. They don't come to us in the first instance talking about reducing CO2 emissions, um, energy use. That's in the discussions, but it's not usually the first thing that anyone talks about. Um, now, this is what's been, I think, one of the reasons why I started my own company is because um, we really wanted to centre people's well-being and any sort of response to, to sort of try and design sustainable buildings. Um, we felt that if you just focus on energy, you you end up with a building that might use less energy and result in less carbon emissions, but it's not necessarily going to be comfortable. Um, whereas if you focus first on ensuring sort of the comfort and well-being and health of people who use the buildings, then you end up with low emissions and high energy efficiency. Um, and that's always been centred to what we do. Now, um, I mentioned that this is the purpose from the Building Act. It's 2004, but I mean, if you go back to earlier versions, the language has always been there. It's not a new idea, it's not a new goal, um, it's just that there's never really been uh, robust ways of actually achieving on that purpose. So um, when I talk about the Passive House Standard, um, it's essentially a new for New Zealand, but not new internationally, uh, means for us as designers to deliver uh, buildings that will meet the purpose of the Building Act. So it's quite simple um, from our point of view. It's, it just works. Um, we've never had uh, an issue with any of our certified passive house projects actually meeting um, the requirements we set for the project. And it's based, it works because it's based on evidence. Um, we can point to energy modelling done during the design process and say to the clients, this is how your project will perform. Um, you know, there's figures that we can pull out of the software and say, hey, this is your heating bill. You know, it's tiny. And, and we can pretty much guarantee that. And we, does, we rely on Passive House um, as a design tool. So it's, it's not something external to the design process for our projects, it's it's integral. It just sits there in every step. And I can spend hours and hours and hours talking about um, all the various aspects of what makes a passive house, um, but often when our clients come to us, as I say, they just want something comfortable, um, they just want this. You know, they want being able to enjoy their house in whatever the weather, um, whatever the time of year, it's always going to be comfortable. And that's, as a concept, is it, it's really easy to sell to our clients. Um, so 
the joke in passive house circles is that the three most important aspects of passive house are comfort, comfort, and comfort. Um, what actually gets you there is a incredibly robust third party process. It's like a building consent for passive houses. Uh, it's undertaken by an external consultant who answers to the client. Uh, they review our work, um, they give us hell, and uh, at the end of it, the client ends up with exactly what they paid for. So um, when I say building consent, it's got a whole lot of stages that mirror a um, building consent under our building code. And uh, it, it just gives clients a peace of mind. It, it means that they're not relying on our say-so. And, and I mean, there's obviously a high level of trust between the architect and the client in any project, but um, they don't have to rely on that trust. They have a third party who um, will essentially give them the benefit of the doubt there. So the Passive House Institute in Europe has set a whole lot of different categories for all sorts of buildings in terms of certification. Um, there's something really for every project. There's something for new builds, something for retrofits. Um, is also something for near misses, so if you're aiming for passive house and you don't quite get there, they've got the low energy building, uh, which is quite handy. It means you've still gone through that process and um, come out with something that you can hold to say, hey, we've got a high performance project, even if it's not quite passive house. Um, there's, not, there's been a little bit of talk about retrofits, and um, from my point of view, it's an incredibly important aspect of the work that we will need to be doing over the next, next little while, there's no way that we're going to achieve our goals unless we're attacking existing buildings at the same time. Um, we've got a few retrofits um, that we're working on currently. I'll talk about them in a little bit. Um, most of the challenges have actually been financial rather than technical. Um, scale has really been the key in making them work or a homeowner that was also a builder. The certification process drives some really high quality outcomes. As I say, it, it gives clients peace of mind about what they're investing in. Um, it's essentially proving that the Passive House Standard is an incredibly powerful tool that uh, delivers robust results. So uh, there's been a few studies of this nature over the last few decades, and they generally all show the same thing. So when built passive house projects are assessed, um, so this is a, a heat loss coefficient uh, test. Essentially, they took a whole lot of completed buildings, they blasted them with heat, and measured the heat loss. So it's, it's eliminating any variables uh, in terms of occupant behavior. Um, and they found that the passive house projects, which are the, the last six, um, we're pretty much within a smidgen, um, that's a technical term, of their predictive performance. Um, and that's really what Passive House is about. There is next to no performance gap between what we say to clients in terms of the built performance is going to be and what it actually is. And I mean, this is just gold, you know, when we can show this kind of data to clients. Um, and often, the reputation of the Passive House Standard precedes um, our involvement with the clients. Often they come to us and they've already convinced themselves that this is what they want, and so the work's done. I mean, we're lucky in that regard. We don't have to spend a lot of time convincing people that this is what they should be doing. Just going to um, talk about a couple of our projects, um, past and current. Uh, there's a great quote from Charles Eames, who's an American designer. I don't remember ever being forced to accept compromises, but have willingly accepted constraints. And I mean, that's the best way um, I've found to describe a passive house standard to anyone, is that um, it's, there's no compromises. Uh, every passive house project and every passive house architect or designer, um, there's a different set of constraints that you're working under, and the response is always different. So there's not really any restrictions as far as we're concerned. Um, there's no single way of doing it. Um, I don't think there's any two projects of ours that look the same. It always ends up being uh, 
a slightly different response. So this one was a, uh, a single residence so, um, down in Shotover country, which was in Queenstown. Um, I think we're quite lucky in that um, we've had the opportunity to work with a whole lot of different materials, um, a whole lot of different clients. So this one was... Uh, relatively boxy design that we did and uh, a lot of that was actually not driven by the passive house standard but by the shape of the site. The client wanted two stories, they wanted a lot of bedrooms and it wasn't a lot of site to play with so we ended up going up to two stories. Um, whereas this one which is just up the coast in Waikanae, the client came to us and said it has to be single story and we've got a huge site and um, we want lots of different spaces of the house, we only want two bedrooms and um, we broke all the uh, supposed rules around doing passive houses on that one and it still worked. So two completely different approaches, two completely different outcomes, but still um, very comfortable buildings and, and very happy clients. And we've got a whole lot of projects um, on the go at the moment. So mostly it's dwelling. Sometimes we're working on a small multi-unit, a um, couple of townhouses, things like that. But... Most of them are single detached. So um, the top top right is this is a new passive house in Wilton, so just up over the hill. Um, it's a apartment in the studio that are attached on probably one of Wellington's most constrained sites. I think we had everything. It used to be someone's swimming pool. Um, that's built from structural insulated panels. Uh, this is a Passive house in, in the far north, um, timber framing. This is going to be a straw bale passive house in Wamanui. Um, and then this one's interesting. This is a, a retrofit of a house uh, also in Northern and Kaipara. And um, this was actually built only in the last 15 years. Um, it's off grid. It was built under what was believed to be sort of cutting edge in terms of sustainability at the time. Um, and yet here we are, less than two, days, two decades later, coming back to redo it. Um, we, and it just sort of shows that you kind of have to go um, as far as, as practical for any project now because chances are if you don't get it right, you're going to have to come back and redo it. Um, and retrofitting is that much harder than doing it you know, right the first time. Um, what we've found with retrofits is you either have to do a whole lot of similar ones at the same time in the same area, or uh, in this case we've actually got a client who is also a carpenter, so that's helped um, to bring the cost down to within reach for them. And... Um, there's, there's a whole lot going on in New Zealand in this particular part of the sector. Um, it's probably been mentioned already, but there's community, community hall, passive house community hall down in Otago. Um, there's co-housing and council housing down in Dunedin. Um, it's really any building type or scale. As I say, we're working mostly with dwellings, but um, there are passive house supermarkets, office buildings, factories... Um, there's examples of pretty much every size and building typology that you can think of that's been done in the passive house standard already. And the technical expertise exists um, either here or internationally uh, to do these types of projects now. Um, we're going to keep using the passive house standard for everything that we can because, as I say, it's, it's just gold in terms of the relationship we have with the clients. It's something we can put to them. We say, here you go, choose this, it works gets the carbon emissions down massively, but more importantly, it's going to be warm and dry and comfortable. Um, just say, if you want any more information about the Passive House Standard, um, go to the Passive House Institute New Zealand. Um, there's also um, a call from me as the Treasurer to help support us. We are a charity and um, we 
love to get the pace of our standing out there.